Hi, let's look at a few on-chain crypto charts. There are quite a few websites with nice little charts. Blockchain.com is one of them. We've also got lookintobitcoin.com. And here this is theblockcrypto.com. I will put the links of all of those three websites in the video description so you can check it out by yourself. But let's have a look at a few of those charts and try to find out where we currently are in the overall Bitcoin macro cycle. A very common, straightforward way to figure out where we are in general in the macro cycle is to draw a logarithmic regression over the Bitcoin price chart. So this is a price since 2010 on a logarithmic scale and the price data has been fitted to a regression line. And then we've got a bit of leeway to the top and bottom to kind of form this trend channel. And when we zoom in here, it looks like that we are currently, if we stay in that channel, slightly undervalued, right? The middle point in this chart is somewhere around 53K US dollars. The upper bound is at 130K. The lower bound is at 22K. So these are the kind of magnitudes you can expect. This is what historically happened. So if you believe in a 100K Bitcoin, you also have to believe that we can potentially fall to 25K or so. This is simply how much Bitcoin in the past moved up and down. Here at the bottom of this chart, you can basically see how much we oscillate between the upper band of the regression and the lower band. So when we are low on this chart, we tend to be historically cheap. When we are high, we tend to be historically expensive. So I'm not going to make any predictions because the different charts, they do have different results here. But at least for this regression, it doesn't look like we are extremely overheated and that we have seen any kind of market cycle peak. It does seem to make sense to still dollar cost average into Bitcoin right now. Now here we've got blockchain.com with the exchange traded volume. So how much trading volume can we observe on the major Bitcoin exchanges? A historical chart, it once peaked at the end of of 2017, which was also a peak in price for Bitcoin, where we then afterwards fell by more than 80%. It then recently kind of semi-peaked in February of this year. And February of this year was when we traded somewhere around 50K, so also pretty high. And currently we tend to go low on this again, right? We had the lowest point. Let's maybe look just at the last three years. We had the lowest point in around January of 2000. And that was also a relatively low point in Bitcoin. So the trading volume here, historically speaking, doesn't seem to be particularly high. It's also not at the lowest point, but it gives us kind of like the same picture, right? We are not heated at the moment. We tend to cool down. And so it doesn't look like we are particularly expensive, nor particularly cheap. But if you expect that Bitcoin is going to increase over the long term in price because of the limited supply, especially versus fiat, since there's so much money printing going on. If you believe in this trend over the long term to stay intact, then buying right now doesn't seem to be a bad idea. We might come down. We might. We don't have to. We might come down further. But that shouldn't bother you too much simply because the long term trend seems to be up into the right. Now, here's another chart, the average confirmation time for Bitcoin. So as you might know, Bitcoin has a limited number of transactions it can process. We mint a new block every 10 minutes and there's only so much data that can be fit into the block. And so what happens when there is a lot of transactions is that the network has some kind of bottleneck. So it takes much longer to process a transaction. This is a minutes chart. So the average confirmation time for Bitcoin here in May, it took more than 10 hours. And now it's back to normal levels again since August of this year. If you look at this for the very long term, maybe the seven day average, we see again the spike around January 2018, right this point over here in price where we are very elevated. And the recent peak here, it happened in May of this year. And that's over here again. So it looks like a very high average confirmation time seems to also indicate potentially elevated prices, a time where you might not want to go really heavy on your DCAing. But it looks like since July of this year that we've got more than enough capacity to process Bitcoin transactions. Since July of this year, this was over here when we were around 31, 32K. So it's interesting, right? When you look at different charts that look at completely different metrics, the price regression, the trading volume on exchanges, the average confirmation time. If you look at different data, you still get similar 
peaks on those charts and they seem to coincide with price peaks as well. So this is very useful, right? You can basically time this, right? When we are low on those charts, just go ahead and dollar cost average in, do your monthly purchases. If we, however, increase, it might make sense to dollar cost average out. Obviously, it also depends on your overall risk exposure to Bitcoin or to crypto in general, right? You want to be balanced with your stocks, with your property. But to kind of get a feeling for the timing of the market where we're currently at, I think these charts are very useful. And it seems to be a good time to continue buying. Now here we've got the total hash rate. I don't think this chart is as useful as many people say for timing the market. This is simply a measure of how much computing power is being used for processing Bitcoin transactions. But even if this chart goes very high, the number of transactions doesn't increase, right? Just the competition for the miners who get rewarded with Bitcoin, it goes up. So this chart really is only interesting if you are in the mining business. If you buy mining hardware and you want to make money burning electricity to get Bitcoin, then this chart is interesting for you. But it doesn't really look like this chart has a lot of correlation with price peaks. And if you're wondering about this crash over here that happened since May, this was basically a ban of crypto mining in mainland China. So there was a lot of mining happening in mainland China and the Chinese government got worried about money laundering, about capital exiting the country. And so a lot of big mining farms in China had to shut down and that's why we got this crash. And now we just recently recover again. This chart is very similar to the average confirmation time, right? When the network is heavily used, when there's not a lot of space in the different blocks, the fees per transactions, they tend to go up. And when we look at this all time, again, we got the peak in 2018 end of 2017, where one transaction costs around $55. And we just recently topped that. And the reason why the US dollar amount here is higher is not necessarily because it cost more Satoshi, but simply because the price of Bitcoin was already higher, right? The price around this peak here was around 3x of what we observed during the last boom. So let's look at the exact timing of that peak. And we can see this happened on April 21st. And so that's around here for the Bitcoin price. Again, very interesting how these, how these price tops and the on-chain data, they seem to correlate. I think it's very useful to watch this. And again, we are low since July, middle of July this year. And this year is the middle of July, right? So it all looks like it's a safe time to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. Next chart, market value to realize value. Now this is a bit more complicated. What this measures is we've got the market value, right? The price price of Bitcoin times the number of Bitcoin in circulation. And the realized value looks at the on-chain data and checks when was a last coin moved. So say you bought Bitcoin into your hardware wallet and you didn't move it for two years. And then what this means is the realized value number will just take those Bitcoins and multiply them by the price two years ago. And so you've got the market value now, say 43k, and your Bitcoin in the hardware wallet for the realized value is registered at say 9k. And so if you owned all the Bitcoin and they were all in your hardware wallet, this metric would show 43 divided by nine, something around five or so. Now, if you were to move this to another hardware wallet, then suddenly this number would update, right? And we would then have 43 divided by 43. So then the number would suddenly plummet to one. So if the price increases and a lot of people are holding their Bitcoin on the wallet without selling anything, the ratio goes up. Then once they do sell, the ratio very quickly goes down. So this market value to realized value is kind of a measure of how many long-term holders are still holding onto their coin. When this goes down quickly, this means long-term holders are selling. When this goes up and it tends to go up, it means the long-term holders tend to hold on. So you see a strong sell-off of long-term holders at the end of 2017. And look at this, end of 2017, that's when the price then started to fall. So this is kind of like a measure of how much is the smart money invested. And once they go out, it's probably time to run for the hills. Now look at the recent peak here. We got a peak in February of this year, middle of February, that's over here. So the smart money again was very smart because they sold at the right time. And so they sold off, they sold off, they sold off. And now the smart money tends to be accumulating again. We can smoothen this out a little bit, maybe taking the seven day 
average looking at the all time chart. And so this could be a nice measure to time market cycle tops, right? Whenever we are say at around three and a half or three, something like this, it could be time to sell. Whenever we are pretty low on this, there seems to be room to be growing and to buy in and hold. So this chart going up means people are accumulating, people are not selling. Once it crashes, it means all the people that accumulated, they are now selling. And so it's interesting, right? This point over here, this very low point in December, 2018, this was also the low point of the crash of the crypto winter. And so probably once we are at around the one level here, it's an extraordinary good time to buy. This here was the Corona crash, by the way. So again, a nice measure. It doesn't look like we are particularly expensive. It doesn't look like we are particularly cheap, but I think this indicator seems to be working pretty well, actually. This is really looking at how do the long-term investors time the market. And whenever we go pretty high on this, it does look like it makes sense to go off risk a little bit. So same story here. We might fall further, very much possible. This doesn't look like it's a time to take on a personal loan and go all in and mortgage your house simply to buy Bitcoin. It's not that cheap, but it also doesn't look very expensive. So just follow your standard procedure here, which should be probably buying regularly every month a little bit. And if we do fall further, if we do get to the one level again, then I think it does make sense to really go risk on. It's obviously also the time when it will be psychologically the hardest, right? If you see the price falling from 20K all the way down to 3K, the news are that Bitcoin is dead, that it has failed over here during the Corona crash. It was, you know, Bitcoin is highly correlated to stocks. It doesn't make sense to diversify with Bitcoin, all kinds of funny stories. So you need to have a strong conviction to buy when everybody else is selling. But that's the exact time when you make those multiple X on your investment. But psychologically, it's obviously also the hardest time. So yeah, just be aware, we could fall another 50% or so. It's not out of the ordinary at all. This is very much possible. Simply manage your risk accordingly. But over the very long term, the price tends to increase, right? If you simply buy now and hold for five years, of course, nobody knows the future. But I would be surprised if the price of Bitcoin in five years would still be at 40 something K. I do think that the nature of Bitcoin not being able to be inflated at all basically fighting this money printing from the central banks. I think that the nature of the asset makes it almost a no brainer to hold it over the very long term. But obviously that's no financial advice, but that's how I personally see it. Now this video is already quite long, so I'm gonna look at the other charts for lookintobitcoin.com and the blockcrypto.com in another video. I hope you already enjoyed the first video of this series. If you enjoyed the content and you want to see more like this, please give this a thumbs up. YouTube will then help to grow the channel. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe as well. I publish a video every single day. And last but not least, feel free to join our Telegram channel, the Bitcoin strategy channel. We are currently around 700 people. We enjoy discussing the overall macro trend, but we also look at specific altcoins, when to buy, when to sell. Would be great to see you join our Telegram group. You can find us either by clicking the link in the video description or by searching for Bitcoin Strategy Channel within the Telegram app. This YouTube channel is still very new. I started this around half a year ago. So if you've got any recommendations on how to improve the content, feel free to give some feedback. I'd like to make those videos better over time. Your feedback would be very much appreciated. You can simply comment this down below. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.